Indian's political parties have shown deep commitment to addressing interfaith relations in a, in a very constructive manner. And particularly the current government of Imran Khan has taken both symbolic as well as substantive initiatives for addressing this issue in a very forthright manner. I'll start, I, at this point, I'll show you a two, three minutes video clip when uh, a few months ago, Prime Minister Imran Khan opened a Kartarpur corridor, which is a very typical example of, which is a very significant example of interfaith relation. So if I can request you, just two, three minutes, This sacred place belongs to the founder of Sikhism, Baba Guru Nanak, who spent 18 precious years of his life here, and his last rituals were also performed at the same place. Darbar Sahib Kartarpur is situated in a small village, about 120 miles from Lahore. A fascinating scenery and lush green fields welcome you as you descend the paved Shakar Gard Road towards the wide, magnificent and splendid building, Darbar Sahib Kartarpur. <coughs> Every member of Sikh community desires to visit this holy place at least once in life. But owing to border restrictions between Pakistan and India, this dream of the majority Indian Sikhs never turned into reality. Its significance could be imagined in a way that a place some four kilometers away from Park border was established to view it through a telescope. Kartarpur Corridor was the long-standing desire of Sikhs to visit one of their holiest places in Pakistan. Respecting their sentiments and desires, Pakistan government laid the foundation stone of Kartarpur Transit on November 28, 2018, which will now be opened for the Indian Sikh community on 9 November 2019. Thus, those devotees who could only see their sacred religious places from four kilometers away can now come and worship at Kartarpur, Pakistan. The establishment of Kartarpur Corridor is an exceptional example of Pakistan's respect for religious sentiments of minorities. this Kartarpur as the, the, for the past 70 years or more than 70 years, the followers of Sikh religion just from a distance of 5 kilometers, 4.7 kilometers could watch through, you know, this telescope, their uh, religious shrine, but were not able to visit because of the visa issues and visa restrictions. But now a visa-free corridor has been created to which 5,000 uh, pilgrims or yatris can visit Pakistan. Now, in addition to that, 400 Hindu temples, Prime Minister has ordered the restoration of 400 Hindu temples, and there are some majestic Hindu temples existing in Pakistan, uh, many, many centuries old, and 400 temples at the moment under the program are being uh, renovated. I visited one of them, Katasraj, which is uh, near my town, and uh, I was 
so fascinating to see such a structure existing in, in Pakistan, and I believe these structures should be part of our cultural heritage. Uh, religious tourism has been liberalized. Um, many Buddhists, Hindus, Sikhs from different parts of the world and Christians visit Pakistan and uh, go to their respective religious places for this religious tourism. Uh, representation of minorities is important in Pakistan because, uh, because Pakistan is an overwhelming Muslim country and uh, there are around 3, 3, 3 4 percent of minority. But constitutional protection, constitutional quotas have been reserved for them to come into the parliament and the constitutional quota is in addition to open competition seats. In civil service, for example, in foreign service of Pakistan, I know many Hindu and Christian colleagues who uh, are uh, there in Pakistan's foreign office. In other professional sectors also, there are equal opportunities and, for example, for admission into any university, religion is not a criteria. So there are, you know, protections which are there and the government has now to take, you know, to ensure in the coming years that these protections are not only further strengthened but provide an open and level playing field to all the minorities. There have been issues also, I will not deny that there have been issues of persecution, there have been issues of isolated incidents, there have been issues of post marriages, but the government is committed to raise legal framework, political framework, social framework for addressing these issues and these issues cannot now remain under a and a very dynamic civil society, NGO community exists in Pakistan which continues to raise uh, these issues even more vociferously than politicians and governments. So uh, now I would, in the next two, three minutes, I'd like to raise the challenges which are before us globally, internationally or regionally uh, with regard to the dialogue among civilizations, with regard to the interfaith harmony. This alliance for United Nations Alliance of Civilizations was uh, launched by the Secretary General Kofi Annan. It has organized, provided forums for so many discussions, debates and uh, uh, interaction ideas, exchange of ideas, exchange of experiences. But what is lacking in the overall scheme of structure is uh, their practical impact, practical initiatives where I think more needs to be done in the coming years so that practical impact of these initiatives can be seen. Some very, very practical areas which we uh, see in our lives on a daily basis, one is the need of respect for religious symbols. All over the world, people attach great importance, great respect to their religious symbols. And that is why if an incident of, say, desecration of Holy Quran happens in any part of the world, in Europe or in America, it is noticed in Pakistan immediately. Similarly, if a, there is a mistreatment of a Christian in Pakistan, it will be noticed immediately by the world community anywhere else. Therefore, it is important that, would, uh, that <coughs> the international community and the societies and cultures should develop some kind of code of conduct or some kind of regulatory framework and by regulatory framework I don't mean that we should create formal structures of regulations but some kind of uh, framework should be there in the mind, some kind of mindset should be evolved in which these uh, these things should be, uh, should be described as undesirable and then there is a very common issue which we have been facing is linkage of religion with terrorism and we believe terrorism is terrorism irrespective of who has done it it should not be if it is done by a, a Muslim it should not be described as Islamic terrorism if it is done by a Christian or any other non-Muslim it should not be associated with that religion so we have to again the international community world has to bring social accept unacceptability to the use of religious and cultural stereotypes. This is the finishing point of this. And my friend John Duke talked about rise of far right, which is a very hot topic. It is not only a hot topic for Europe and uh, Americas, but it is also a hot topic for South Asia. Why?
why you know countries such as uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, Maldives, and many other countries in our region are experiencing movement for progressivism, pluralism in democracy. We, um, our larger neighbor in India, there are some actions which have been taken which require, um, you know, key-rooted intellectual debate in the international community. I'll not go into the details, but I'll just refer to three things. One is the adoption of Citizenship Act of 2019, which discriminates against Muslim citizens. There is some of the judicial decisions have been influenced by majoritarianism. For example, the Indian Supreme Court's decision against the uh, demolition of Babri Mosque. And recently, last, this week, there was a decision uh, equating the persons who were involved in massacre of Gujarat in 2003. And then the atrocities being committed against uh, the people in Jammu and Kashmir do not augur fell for interfaith harmony and unilateral actions taken there. So, what is the solution? I think there should be political ways should be found for popularizing moderate political forces. Two, three things just I want to very briefly underline which are important in, in, in any international context. Integration and assimilation. The communities who come to another place and want to live there for their own better future, they should also develop approaches for assimilation and integration into the host community. And that is how international community and forums, United Forums can help those communities in integrating them can be seen. Then some kind of innovative approaches can be used. Some time ago I was uh, attending a lecture at Technical University by a German professor and he suggested that any small town where you have three religious communities, instead of building three, you know, mosques, churches and uh, uh, synagogue, you can have a community center with a mosque in one corner, with a church in one corner and a synagogue in so the people come for community events, entertainment events, and they can they have also the religious symbols there. So these kind of uh, innovative approaches are useful. And the last thing which I want to underline here that uh, in last uh, in recent years we are seeing decline of multilateralism, and decline of multilateralism is not good for interfaith relation or for improving interfaith harmony because it, it is great. It, drives force from uh, rule-based international order. So we have to, in our states have to invest more in um, in uh, potence of uh, multilateral structures. Here I will stop the bottom time constraints and thank you very much.